Today I'm working on a 1998 Oldsmobile Aurora. This is uh, equipped with a 4.0 liter dual array cam 32 valve V8 engine. And we're going to go ahead and replace the head gaskets on it. This vehicle can sit about 20 minutes idling and then there's no problems. And then you go to drive it about 25 minutes on the road and it starts overheating and the cooler reservoir starts bubbling. They went ahead and a, a shop actually put a new cap on there thinking that was the problem and it didn't fix it. It said it was the cap, being it was newer, it started relieving the pressure through the overflow hose. So that didn't fix the problem. We're gonna go ahead and replace the, the head gasket. We've got the head gasket set coming in. And uh, to do this job, we're gonna have to Pull the motor and transmission together and drop it from underneath the car on the key member. Of course, I went ahead and uh, put the vehicle on jack stand. I think we went ahead and removed the tire that exposes the inner fender. There's usually a black plastic cover that wraps the inside on both sides of the vehicle, like so. So, what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to remove all the little plastic clips, kind of look like this one right here. And you're going to need a tool like this to go ahead and remove the inner clips. Once you do that, that'll give you full access to the engine, inner engine compartment. And uh, I went ahead and uh, disassembled the driver's side, but I wanted to show you. What I try to do is I try to take all the weight that I possibly could off of this. So I'll remove these two bolts. You got to remove this 10 millimeter. And uh, remove these 15s. On this brake caliper and you're gonna remove the caliper hang it to the side remove your bracket remove the rotor and then you're gonna tie your spindle to your control arm so the CV shafts and the pivot arm or not the pivot arm but uh, the outer tie rod is actually going to not not put any strain on any of these parts so what we're going to do this is pretty much what you want to want it to look like See how, how I separated pretty much anything on the control arm from the body of the car because we're going to drop the whole key member with the motor training down completely. I just tied off the, the, the caliper off to the side, tied off the spindle to the control arm, remove your ABS wire, and pretty much lays out these parts. Now, one tip this vehicle had an alignment issue. And they had to use these special bolts. If you go, if you see this bolt, which it's smaller than the factory, you can notice the difference. Make sure you mark it. Mark it right there. That way, when you put this bolt back in, it goes exactly back to the correct alignment. So this, so you don't have to take it back to the shop and get it realigned. So make sure you pay attention to that. So once you have all these parts removed, that's pretty much where you want to be get this done on both sides then we'll move forward both left and right side all tied up and no longer bolted to the to the car we're looking to go ahead and i went ahead and remove the air tube those right here and i'm trying to access the cooling so i'm going to go ahead and i pull the clamp off have it sitting aside but to get easier access i'm going to go ahead and remove this plate We've got three bolts here numerous bolts on the front side and three bolts over here. They are 10 millimeter bolt heads. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this to access the fan, assemblies, anything that's down here that we can go ahead and pull out so we don't go uh, break anything. Go ahead and remove this cover. That actually exposed a hose that went from right here all the way to the other side. I went ahead and pulled them out. I broke this guy loose and now the coolant is dropping to a catch pan down below. We went ahead and removed the, the fan assemblies that gave us full access to the radiator side. We went ahead and removed the transmission cooling line here and the one on the bottom, the 5 8 uh, wrench. Went ahead and just tied them off. We're actually stabbed them right in this area. Uh, get them out of the way. We go ahead and uh, remove the clamp, remove this coolant reservoir. Gives us full access to this side. And then we'll move on to removing the, the throttle throttle cable and the cruise control, your fuel lines, 
You have a fuel pressure in the return line right here. Of course, you're going to need a special tool to, to safely remove this correctly. Remove the, the brake booster hose, this hose right here. Get that guy off. The evap hose, pretty much you just squeeze this little deal and it'll slide right out. And then we'll see what we're, where we're at with that. Over the throttle body or the master plus sensor, you got these two fuel lines returning pressure. They're held on by these little special clips. These are safety clips that prevents it from sliding off if the actual locking pin is not in its correct area. But inside you have a little ring and, and you got to expand it. And you're going to need a special tool like these. These are color coded. You can find it at your local parts store. But the top line right here shows to be 3 8 it's blue color and what you do is you snap this little guy on right there and then you're supposed to slide it inside once you slide inside it actually opens up that little bitty ring and then I should be able to remove this fuel line by grabbing it and slowly tug on it like so so just wanted to show you a little tip just in case you can't get that that uh, fuel line off, you gotta purchase these little bitty uh, tools. Of course, the bottom one is gonna be the 516, and you'll just have to remove this little little clip, this little safety clip, like so. So, just wanted to show you that little tip on the fuel line. Bottom side of the vehicle, of course, this is the K member right here. This is the part on the exhaust pipe that we're gonna to have to remove. All the rest of the exhaust can stay because that's all gonna come out together. But you're gonna remove four bolts. And what I do is I use PB Blaster because uh, it was covered in rust. And I went ahead and broke them all loose. And they, all they are is a little 13 millimeter or half inch nuts. And it should come right off. It's, it's broke loose, ready to drop. Just wanted to go ahead and uh, show you PB Blaster. It's some good stuff, breaks the rust loose, and bolts come right off. Alright, with your uh, throttle cables out of, removed, your transmission line disconnected, you want to go ahead and just slide it off to the side. Stick the throttle cable right here, got the fuel lines hanging up on the top side. Evap hose, I just put it off to the side. That's your vacuum line to the booster, I just stick it off to the side on the motor side. Your, your engine, your power control, all your electrical is going to be between this box right here and this one right here. So there's a little bolt on the inside, seven millimeter. I just usually go ahead and get an extension like so. And I just go in there and break it loose like, like so. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect those. And then uh, before you go ahead and truly drop it or actually start on it if you don't have an AC vacuum to vacuum out the Freon it's best you take it to a shop and have them remove the Freon before doing this job if you don't have the system so that way it's vacuumed correctly because you're gonna have to separate the AC AC lines or the compressor from the AC condenser dryer and whatnot that's around the motor Make sure you get that vacuumed out by a certified uh, AC repair shop. So you can go ahead and uh, do this do-yourself job. All right, with the electrical connectors disconnected, I had disconnected this side. Uh, I came on this side, there was a reservoir right here for the washer fluid, went ahead and removed that. Your battery cable, that's right here. Disconnect that, push it out. And then you have a ground strap cable right here, 15 millimeter. Take it off. You have your AC line right here, 13 millimeter. Remove that bolt, slide it out. That'll pretty much remove the rest of the component on this side. There was, however, a sensor that was right here. And when you go to drop the motor, you have a possibility of actually hitting this frame right here. So it's held on by a 10 millimeter bolt. I went ahead and uh, 
remove the bolt and pull the uh, sensor out. That way, I don't damage it when removing. And uh, for the remaining components, you still got this mount right here that holds this side with the one long bolt. I go ahead and remove that long bolt and uh, these four bolts. And that should free up this side. Just gotta remember, there is one mount on the driver's side. These two bolts right here. Make sure you disconnect that or remove this mount from this frame. So I went ahead and just removed this bolt and when the K-member drops, it should just slide directly down. So it's just about ready to roll, ready to drop. Make sure you go over everything around the motor. Make sure you don't didn't miss anything, like anything that might be hitting behind a hose, you know, a little heater hose here. Anything that's disconnected from the, or anything that's hooked up from the body to the engine, you wanna make sure it's disconnected before we go pulling the six main bolts that hold the key member. So uh, I'm pretty much got the mount left over there and then I'm gonna go ahead and lower it. But before I lower it, unless you have a car lift, uh, I'm gonna raise the body of this car as high as I can and put the jacks back here. And then I'm gonna hook that cherry picker to the lifting ports on this motor so I can safely lower it down. And you have a, a lifting point right here by the booster. And the other lifting point is on the other side of the motor right here. So I'm gonna hook the, uh, the cherry pick to that at, as soon as it's unbolted and then we'll lower it straight down. You could remove it with the jack itself but it's gonna be difficult and I'd recommend uh, a two-man team doing so but if you're by yourself if you have something you can lay up underneath the k-member then i would do so like these i'm going to go ahead and place four of these underneath the k-member so i can roll it straight out but if you got a car lift it makes it super easy you just lay the motor or the k-member directly on a table and lift the whole body up but i don't have a lift and like any other garage guru you pretty much got regular tools. All right, with everything now unbolted from the top side of the motor and transmission is ready to drop on this K-member, you got six bolts. These bolts right here. Those are 18 millimeter bolts and there are six. What I do though is I go ahead and break them loose and I let the motor tray drop just a little bit on all the way around. And the there's a reason for that. See inside here, it's hard to see it, but now that it's dropped maybe a uh, half an inch, I can actually see with this boot right here, this is actually on your rack and pinion, you can see there's a bolt. You have to remove that bolt. That's an 11 millimeter bolt and that goes to your steering column for your steering on your vehicle. So please ensure you drop the K-member just a little all the way around and you get that bolt and you pop the shaft off and then she should be ready to drop as one complete assembly. Just wanted to show you that. All right, went ahead and uh, I've dropped the motor and the transmission. Of course, as you can see, it's still sitting on the, the key member and now it's actually on the dollies. These are actually wheel dollies for a, uh, a car if you want to roll it around your shop. But I've got three of them actually underneath this thing. And so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna roll this thing out. But how I lowered it down when the cherry picker was over here, of course, you know, there's two uh, hooks. You have one hook just right there. So right there, there's a hook. And then the other side on the passenger front, the other hook is way on the other side. You can see it right there. So with the cherry picker hooked on there, we was able to take the, the, the frame bolts you have six bolts total. Remove them while the cherry picker is supporting this. And then after you do so, you go ahead and slowly lower it down. Now I will say that while removing it, there was actually a bracket that went right here. That bracket needs to be removed. It actually hits your alternator and, it, and this, this side catches. So make sure you remove that bracket and also remove your thermostat housing uh, because it'll catch on your ABS module that actually sits right there. 
So remove those before lowering it and then go ahead and lower it down and you're gonna place it on jack stands first. That's what I had to do. Place, place the K-member on jack stands. Once it was on jack stands, I was able to take the cherry picker off, pull the cherry picker away, and then go ahead and place my, uh, my low profile jack underneath the rear of, the, uh, of this, lift it, and then place, pull the jacks out, then place the dollies underneath the rear K-member, and then I did the same with the front K-member. So it's ready to roll out. It's gonna roll out just like that on the shop floor, but it's actually gonna hit still right here. I need about two more inches of clearance. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and uh, I'm gonna raise, raise the vehicle up about three more inches to get that clearance. And then this is gonna be ready to roll and we're gonna roll it out and do the head job right here. So I wanted to share with you on how to drop it and then pull it out. So I slid it out and now, as you can see, you have full access all the way around this motor to do the heads on this vehicle. This motor. So I'm gonna go ahead and start breaking it down. We'll go ahead and remove this cover, 13 millimeter bolts. And we're gonna have to pretty much disassemble anything that is attached to the heads anyway. So the cover's gonna come off, do the intake, remove the coils, make sure the number, I like the number things. Remove the exhaust manifolds on both sides, right there. Uh, any, any accessory that's bolted to the head, it doesn't look like anything right here on the back is. Uh, power strip up is going to have to get moved. This point right here is going to have to get moved. Uh, the alternator, got some uh, bolts right here. Tensioner, it looks like. So, we're going to do it step by step, of course. So, we're going to go ahead and Remove the cover first and get to the get to the intake. All right, went ahead and pulled the cover off. There's four screws holding it in place, and this is pretty much what you're going to see when you remove it. Of course, you want to go ahead and pay attention where all the all the connectors, any lines might go. So you want to make sure everything goes back into the same place. So we're going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to pull the the coil packs off. And then to remove the wires, I'm going to label everything. Of course, you can, probably, you can find the schematics on the, the firing order online or go to O'Reilly's AutoZone. They should be able to supply the firing order if you mix it up. But I always number everything just in case. And then I'm going to go ahead and remove your intake. Of course, you've got these 10 millimeter bolts. I'm going to go ahead and pop those out and this whole part should come out. You have this, uh, the EGR tube. Go ahead and remove that. It's like 13 millimeter bolts. You have one here, one there, pull that off. And that whole assembly, once you remove that, remove the 10 millimeter bolts, any of the vacuum lines, you should have this thing off. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop that puppy off. All right, while removing the, the ignition control module with the coil packs, what I usually do is, this is the top of the spark plug wire. I'll write the number down. Though on the valve cover it's got a number, I, I want to ensure that it matches like so on both sides and then I'll go ahead and pull the coil pack and that makes it an easier process to just pop it back on there and just match the numbers up. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this now before going to remove this intake. The intake being removed, you have these 10 millimeter bolts. There's three of these on each side. And then there's these uh, spacers with these bolts, long bolts. That's what it actually holds the cover on. So you're gonna have five bolts on both sides. And then on the wiring, you have little connectors like this. That little guy squeezes. When you squeeze it, it releases from the fuel injectors. So squeeze them, it pops right out. You do not have to remove that little bitty metal clip. The little clip stays there. You just squeeze it, it releases, to pull. All right. Remove that, you got one bolt on the back side, goes right here, or right by the power stream pump, back of the intake. If that, you have a, you have a few electrical connectors right here, massive flow sensor, hot air control valve, the throttle positioning sensor. You have a bolt that sits right here, 10 mil. You have another one that sits right here and holds a fuel rail. 
Once you go remove that, uh, detach all your fuel injectors. You have your map sensor. Uh, she should be ready to come out. But you have to pull your harness off to the side. And then uh, grab it and lift up. Just make sure when you go to remove this, organization. See? Keep the bolts. The, with the ignition pull. These bolts are all for the intake, the vapor lines, each bracket keeps the bolts with whatever it comes off. So organization to ensure that everything goes back together. So now that exposes the starter that's in the valley of intake. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, remove the valve covers, get all the bolts out, pop both sides out, any brackets, wiring, Move that off, and then we'll go ahead and get started on the exhaust manifolds on both sides. So they look pretty easy. Extension, 13 millimeter socket. Throw some B12 on there. Not B12. I'm sorry. Uh, some of that uh, PB blaster. Break the rust loose. Right here. Also helps keep some lubricated from seizing up. So. I'm going to go ahead and remove this and the other side and the valve covers. Pull the valve covers, I decided to go ahead and remove this bridge first. This bridge actually runs from one side of the head to the other side of the head. But the first, first off, you're going to have to remove there is a tube that went right here and it came out over here. That was one of the heater hose tubes. That came off pretty easy. Another one is right here and this one actually just clips side right there. I'm going to leave them in there right now, but you're going to have to remove your sensor. That's right there. Your coolant sensor, ground, and all these bolts. These are all 13 millimeter bolts. They bolt to the head. Water pump's right here. The belt for it. You can see it. It's driven. But we got to go ahead and uh, separate this. So anything that's in the way of the actual bolts to the housing needs to come off. GR needs to be popped. Let's go ahead and disconnect the bolt right here and break it loose right there. There's more PB blaster in here. That way it breaks it loose pretty easy. The bracket it runs down here all the way up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that done. This little thing right here is actually the transmission vent and I barely removed the hose or the wiring and it just snapped. That's dry rotted. So if there's anything that's dry rotted or hard to get to, like that little rubber hose that's right here, any type of hose, now is a great time to replace any of these dry rotted parts. While you have the motor torn apart, replace it. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock this out now. All right, before I go ahead and remove this bridge, I just wanna tell you, it was kind of a little difficult. One, you had a bracket that ran from here up, bolted right here. This is two 15 millimeter bolts. This is an 18. So you have to remove that bracket. <clears throat> and then there's these bolts down here. To access this bolt, there's a shifter plate that goes right here. That will have to come out to access those bolts. They're not gonna come completely out because there's no room. So these bolts need to come out with the actual uh, bridge. And you will have to unbolt this that sits right here by the thermostat. This uh, this transmission hose because it's in the way of the inbolts down here. So all I did was pull it back, and I can access those bolts. And the other ones were pretty easy. That one down there, right here, is it really good? on the hard side. But as long as you got a swivel 13 millimeter, you can get in there. And now the whole thing is loose coming out so I just want to share with you all of these brackets assemblies everything that goes right here has to come out for you to access these two little bolts down here so we're gonna go ahead and remove that then we're gonna to move to the front side with removal of this plate all right we're working on the, the panel that covers all the belts and whatnot 
I want you to go ahead and remove it. It's held on. There's an eight millimeter bolt. The power steering hose runs and attached to that bolt. And you have two long bolts and then two little nuts. So you're looking at 13 and 15 millimeter. Let's go ahead and remove that. That pretty much exposes your serpentine system. And of course, a half inch wrench or ratchet will go ahead and remove the belt. Like so. And uh, after looking at this, I've noted that the power steering pump does not have to be removed. You can actually sit there, it's built into a bracket, but it's not attached to the head. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this tensioner, a 13 millimeter bolt in the center, and uh, remove this little bracket with the ground strap and the other power steering hose and just let that hang to the side. And as far as the alternator, the alternator is mounted, it looks like to the block. It's actually not attached to the head, except right here. It's in the front right here. So we're gonna detach that, push, grab a pry bar, pull it down. And the exhaust manifolds, I was gonna go ahead and remove them, but you can remove this side. But the back side is actually a little harder. The bolts are actually straight down going into the rack. So what I did is I'm just gonna leave that leave the manifold on here and I'm gonna pull the head with the exhaust manifold attached to it. The, the head is made of aluminum, so it's not gonna be as heavy as a cast head. So I'm gonna leave that on there, gonna come off one assembly. I guess I'm gonna go ahead and pull that one off. But we're gonna go ahead and uh, disassemble this, this little bracket, the valve, and then work on the valve covers. So. All right, working on the remove of the main components that is attached or in between the head and the block. There's a bracket that was right here. Went ahead and remove that, set that to the side. We got a tensioner. Pulley. There's that bracket with that ground strap. And once I went ahead and removed that, I've now removed the harmonic balancer. Of course, I went ahead and removed the large bolt and I stuck a three jaw puller on it. But I use a ratchet, a little bit of ratchet strap to squeeze these arms real tight so it doesn't pop out of this little lip. So I just went in and turned clockwise and put the strap around it, squeeze it tight, and use the impact. Because if you try to go ahead and uh, use it manually by hand, the whole motor wants to turn. But I went ahead and uh, used the impact on it. And I went ahead and got it off. You know, at least it's almost off. And that's a 5.8 right here. So I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of this off. Then we're going to go ahead and remove the timing cover. And there's bolts all the way around it. Those are all 10 millimeter bolts. So we're gonna remove the cover that's going to close the timing chain. And once the valve covers are off, we'll set the timing just right. But working on the valve covers, these are 10 millimeter bolts. We're gonna go ahead and remove both sides. I already busted them loose, so they're just sitting there. But on the front valve cover, of course you know you have the water pump board. This valve cover would not come off that pulley's there. This pulley's got to come off the valve cover. It lifts up and comes out sideways. So you're going to have to get a pulley puller kit. There was a little bolt that was right here. It's a little plastic torque head bolt. Went ahead and removed that. That exposed the groove in here where I was able to put the tool on there. And this is ready to go ahead and uh, pull this pulley off because it's pulled on, it's got to be pulled off. Once this is pulled off with the pulley puller kit, in which you can get at your local parts store, this, this uh, valve cover should lift up and slide out like so, accessing the head bolts and the cams. 
this side. This side's pretty much broke loose. head gasket set, it's going to come with new grommets or seals. So you have four seals for your spark plugs and the, mid, and the main one. Make sure you keep all the bolts on the valve cover. That way they go back on the same. Just got to replace the seal. But we're going to go ahead and uh, remove the harmonic balancer now. Take the cover off and remove that valve, uh, valve cover. I went ahead and uh, removed the timing cover. Uh, fortunately, you will have to unbolt the AC compressor. These three bolts, they are 13 millimeter, so 15 millimeter bolt heads. I'm sorry. And then there is one bolt, you see it right there, that's on the back of the compressor. Remove that, it'll, it'll give you room, it'll actually move, and you can actually access this bolt. If you don't unbolt it, you gotta go at an angle, probably, to get that last bolt out. But uh, it's it, it was quick and easy. Pull it off, move it aside, and pull it straight out. And I went ahead and uh, did a visual inspection of the timing chain, and everything looked good until I came to one deal right there. And as you can see, the timing chain tensioner is actually being dug in by the timing chain. That is a no-go. So always ensure you inspect whenever you go breaking into something like this because you might crash into other things that need replacement. In this case, the, the main timing chain tensioner needs replaced. It's supposed to look like something like that, that bracket right there. That's another tensioner pushing up against the guide. So that guide broke in pieces and here's a piece of it. So. Always do a visual inspection, making sure everything else looks good. We're gonna go ahead and uh, replace the tensioner. A few of the guides get replaced, and then. Uh, but before we go ahead and do that, I'm gonna go ahead and set the timing on this in the proper area, and then we're gonna go ahead and uh, start unbolting the heads. So I just wanted to share with you. Make sure you always inspect and make sure you write down what needs to be replaced. Get the parts ordered. Go to your local parts store and get it done and get them replaced. Alright, the timing chain now fully exposed. The key thing is to mark. It's all about marking on timing. So with your inner chain, you want to make sure it fits at 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock, like so. And then in the center, the two outer chains that go to the heads, they're going to be at 6 o'clock. But you want to go ahead and get cylinder number one, the top dead center. So he's got to be all the way to the top. And this is number one. This is the one that's in the back on the passenger side, closest to the passenger. And then on your chain, on the sprockets, you want to ensure the lines are just like so. You want to mark them. I always mark the chain. The engine was good running engine before tearing it apart. And I look at it, so it's supposed to be 90 degrees from the surface of here up. 90 degrees, like on both sides. Look on the inner ones. It's going to be 90 out this way. So once you have your markings marked, it's now time to remove, start removing the timing chains. So we're going to go ahead and remove the outer one. We got the tensioner right here. Going to have to compress it, remove it. And that's going to give you slack on your chain. You got to use two wrenches on your camshafts to ensure that you can break this bolt loose. You can use an impact. Bust it loose, get them off, get this one off, and then we'll work on the front side. All right, went ahead and uh, got the sprockets off the top. Of course, I like to mark everything. I always suggest mark, mark, mark. So the camshaft is marked to the cap. Though, when you remove the chain, nothing should turn. It should be exactly, it's going to exactly sit still. So, I went ahead and uh, removed the tensioner. And the tensioners are compressed in there. And you're going to have to do something like this. 
And when you squeeze it, this little bitty arm on the side moves. And once it reaches the flat bottom, stick a, stick a pin in there and it's gonna lock it in position. So then you can go ahead and remove the chain and it should give you ample, ample slack. So I went ahead and removed the first chain and then the second chain, the other tensioner was right here. But of course, of course, that tensioner does not, it's actually broken. It does not lock. It just, it's free spin. Actually, this is the bottom one. What's the other one at? It just moves. It's not supposed to do that. It's supposed to lock. That little arm is supposed to move. So we're gonna replace this tensioner and also this one. This is the actual main one that sat right here on the main chain and this is what the chain has been doing to it. So it's actually been eating it up. So plastic becomes brittle and then carnage happens after it breaks. So we're going to replace this tensioner as well. But as long as you're at top dead center and all the marks meet, that nothing on the engine assembly should be another your camshaft. But I strongly suggest always mark. Mark and mark. So now we're gonna go ahead and uh, start the removal process of the heads. We're gonna leave the camshafts on the heads because we're only gonna replace the head gaskets unless the heads need resurfaced. If they need surface, then we'll pull the cams off. But we're gonna go ahead and leave them on and then we're gonna do a inspection with the straight edge underneath the heads. All right, with the chains now removed, you have guides that run on both sides. I pulled the chain before the guides, but you could do either or. You have to remove these plastic caps to actually sit right here. And then there's two caps right here. That acts as the, the bolts for the guides. 10 millimeter behind it, make sure you have a magnet. Pull all, both guides on this side and both guides on this side because they're actually attached to the head. So you don't want to damage anything. That needs to be done. And then you're gonna come from the top side. Now that the head's ready to come off, the, the head bolts are 10. So it's Allen. And then there, you can't forget about those bolts. Those are 10 millimeter bolts. There's three on both sides. Those have to come out along with the ones on the other side. Once you do that, the head's ready to come off. We're gonna go ahead and proceed with removal of the heads. And we're gonna, we're gonna see what's going on underneath it.